Hello and welcome to part 4 in this video series on Python and Arduino serial communication. In this video we're going to utilize the Python list. This will enable us to collect multiple data points and use them for either analysis, plotting, or writing the files. We'll start by comparing the code we left off with in part 3 on the left to the new code on the right. I'm using a file comparison tool to highlight the differences. The green highlights are new lines of code, and the yellow lines are altered lines of code. We'll look at the right side to see the new code that we added in. First we need to create and initialize the list that we're going to be using to collect our data points. NumPoints is the variable for the size of the list. The list itself is going to be called data list, and we're going to initialize it with all zeros, and the size of it is NumPoints. Remember that a list is just a collection of data that can be indexed. So we can call and pick out specific points within a list. The middle green highlight is just white space and we can ignore that. Getting into the while true loop is where we made additional updates. I updated the prompt because we're going to be asking for multiple data points and not a single data point. User input stops and waits for the user to request data points. And if they select yes, y, then we go into a for loop. I'm using the typical for loop syntax for Python. For i in range. Inside the range function is 0 to num points. Because we know what the size of the data list is, we want to use num points as a reference for the index. Recall that the first item in a list is at the 0th index, so we start at 0. In the for loop, we're just iterating through and collecting data points. We assign data to get values, which does the necessary serial operations to get our data point. We want to make sure we save the data points in the right point at the index. And that's what the data list bracket i does. To make sure it's the proper index, we make sure that the for loop i matches the data list index i as well. Here's the code in action. Once we receive the y, we get the values. However, notice that there's a carriage return and a newline character appended to the data point. Previously, when we were printing out a single point, we eliminated this carriage return and newline by using decode with an ASCII parameter passed to it. However, in the case where I'm writing this list, I'm getting a different result. I made a debug file that incrementally prints out each step. Notice how in the getValues function, when we're just printing out the single point, there's no carriage return or newline. But when we print out the list, there are. I decided to pick a different method to condition the data that's coming off the serial rather than use the decode with the ASCII parameter. Instead, I just added on split and passed split the carriage return and newline character. What this does is when it gets the serial information off the bus, it puts the data into a list. And the list items are separated by the carriage return and newline. We get one point at a time. Now we just get the data points without those special characters. I made a file that steps through each change by using the print function. To get more detail, I also included a type function. This type function tells us what the data is. Whether it's a character, an integer, a float, a list, it gives us more insight into what we're actually looking at. We assign Arduino data to the readline function. This gets the serial information, but the Arduino data is no longer just a single value, it's now a list. So I printed off the first value in the list, and that's our data point. And this data point is a string. Then I printed out the next item in the list, which is empty. Notice that in the getValues function, we return Arduino data with the index of zero. This is just the data point. The final result is a list of strings that's assigned to data list. In this final clip, I'll show the modification to the get values function. Thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for more content on interfacing Arduino with Python and future expanded applications.